I would like to welcome you all here. We, I'm very much privileged to be the moderator of this roundtable on women in ICT. I was just uh, joking with uh, Dr. Hesa Al-Jaber from Qatar because I've seen her in many uh, arenas where she's the only lady around, the, around. and uh, today I am taking her seat and I can feel the heat that uh, <laughs> she was going through. I'm sure most of the ladies here, whenever you are representing your countries or your organizations, find yourself in, in that situation. And this has to change. And uh, I think it's starting today with that change, where I'm alone here. Um, but uh, I'm really privileged that we have uh, women leaders around us in this panel. We'll have uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Uh, Biti Loko Njai from Senegal, um, who is uh, representing the Minister of Communication, who cannot be with us here today. I have uh, Ms. Uh, Lor Olga, uh, who is uh, the Secretary General of the Ministry of, uh, of the Secretary General of the President's Office in Gabon former minister of telecommunications. She was one of the best ministers, uh, you know, we've seen, so, and they're very pr proud to have her here. Uh, and uh, she has, uh, is a member of uh, the board of directors of African Development Bank, and uh, also former deputy minister of foreign affairs of, uh, of uh, President Bongo at the time, on, uh, Bongo Ondiba, on, on the former uh, president. So we're happy to have her here. Yasna is not, Yasna Matish is not with us so far. Maybe she will be joining us later. I've seen her during the conference. I don't know if she, she is still here. Uh, we have uh, uh, the Minister of uh, Communication, my brother Musa Ben Hamadi, uh, is not here with us. The advisor. The minister will be is joining us. We have uh, again, as I mentioned, Dr. Hesa Al Jaber. Dr. Hesa is Secretary General of ICT Qatar. She is the architect of the modern connected Qatar, and we're really very proud of that. A member of the Brogan Commission, and uh, I can truly say that I'm very proud of what she's doing. Uh, we have uh, with us Deborah Tate, Deborah Taylor Tate. Uh, former commissioner of FCC, and uh, uh, currently special envoy of uh, ITU Secretary General on Child Online Protection, because she has passion for this, and she has done a lot in this area, and we are really, really proud of that. Uh, we have Kerija Geriani, Secretary General of Arab Information and Communication Technology, from Tunisia, former secretary and the secretary for uh, communication in Tunisia. She brought internet to Tunisia. And uh, really, uh, to her credit, a, a lot of uh, things has been done, including the organization of the World Summit on Information Society uh, in Tunis in 2005. We have uh, with us uh, Minister Omobola Johnson, who needs no introduction. We have seen her in uh, all uh, uh, instances, uh, seeing how she came from private sector and she is uh, dynam really dynamizing the sector in Nigeria. That was, I must frankly say, that was already uh, booming and she added her personality and her energy into it and is moving. And Nigeria is a fun place to make business today, thanks to that. Uh, I have uh, with us uh, the representative of the uh, president uh, of uh, Costa Rica. President Chinchi, as you know, is the champion of uh, protecting children in the cyberspace. When I created this cyber, global cybersecurity agenda, 
I flew to Costa Rica and then at the time spoke to former president Oscar Arias Sanchez, who is a former, I was a Nobel Prize winner. As you all know, he won the Nobel Prize in the 80s for refusing to, to creating an army. You know, Costa Rica is the only country in the world that does not have an army. And he was asked to fight the rebels. He fought for the rebels with microphone and he won. And he made peace in his country. He won a Nobel Prize then at the time. And uh, uh, there is peace and prosperity in this country. When President Chinchilla came in power, uh, Laura Chinchilla, uh, I asked her if she, she would continue this uh, task to be the, champ the, the uh, our patron for the global cyber security agenda. She said, yes, I will continue, but I want something more concrete, even more at the time when we were trying to find some tangible things to do, and protecting children online was a priority. And she has agreed to be the patron of that, and we are very honored to have you here representing President Chinchia today. So it's a great pleasure to be here with you to, to moderate this uh, roundtable. Our focus today is on women and girls in ICT, a topic of great importance to ITU and to the world in general. Gender equality is a founding principle of the UN and ensuring equal opportunities for men and women in ICT sector is vitally important to ITU. The role of women is key in reducing poverty and promoting socioeconomic development for themselves, for their families, and for their countries. Educated, empowered women create productive, strong economies and societies where women are fully represented and are, are more, those societies are more peaceful and stable than those that are not. To quote the UN Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, equality for women and girls is not only a basic human right, it is a social and economic imperative. Getting women and girls into ICT is vital for a number of reasons. ICTs facilitate the promotion, the provision of education and job training, and they also improve access to healthcare and participation in economies and civil societies. And in a world where 95% of all jobs now have a digital component, encouraging women and girls in ICT is critical. So, uh, you know, women CEOs now lead 18 of the 500 companies, the Fortune companies. Fortune 500 company, sorry. This is a, a welcome increase on last year because there were only uh, 10 last year, but uh, it's still far from a parity. 10 out of 158 independent ICT regulatory authorities are also headed up by women, and Dr. Hesa Jabari is one of them. That's also very, very insufficient. So our challenge is to increase women's access to ICT globally through increased global connectivity, and broadband connectivity especially, create demand among women and girls for careers in the sector, increase the number of women in ICT education, and encourage the private sector to attract, promote, and retain women over the long term. And especially we need to do something to increase the level of women participation. When you look at statistics, you can say number of women in the company is sometimes you have 50%. But as you go in the pyramid, up in the scale uh, of uh, responsibilities on the top, I mean, there's less and less women in terms of percentage. One thing I've done in ITU, and I would like to ask the the uh, panelists today to tell me what can be done to increase it. One thing that I've done, when I was elected in 2007, I looked at the job postings when we were publishing a position in the requirements uh, that we publish. We say, say 10 
15 or 20 years of continuous experience. By simply removing the world continuous from that, we open up a, a big field here because it was discriminatory to women who decided to have a child and take time off a year or two to take care of that kid, which is a very big responsibility. That way I was able to, to hire p p ladies at D2 position. In fact, uh, the highest ranking lady in the, in the UN system uh, below the elected officials is a D2, is, uh, is Doreen Bogdan in my office. She is the head of the SPM. Uh, she is the mother of triplets. And when she had the triplets, so of course took almost two years off to, to, to take care of the, the, the kids. And to me, that was even a, 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 good, a better parameter. If she can take care of uh, triplets, she can take care of me and the ITU. <laughs> yes, because it's a planning, advanced planning, uh, no panicking, one start crying, the other one also, and then you know you have to plan when you're going out, all sorts of that. And today, I'm a happy man, because anything I think of, she just, it was done already, because she already thought about it. That's the power of women. I always joke by saying that women are analog and men are digital. No offense, it was uh, being more advanced than others, but it's just for uh, being able to, women are able to, to, um, to think on many issues at the same time, solve many problems at the same time, while, while we men can only do one at a time. When I'm watching my the TV, when my wife is here, when, when I'm watching TV and she asks me a question, I, I can't answer because I'm watching TV. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the, that's the uh, thing. And uh, so, uh, and the analog signal, of course, can carry many carriers, many signals in the same carrier, and the digital is only one, one, one signal at a, at a time, one impression at a time. That's why the, the anal anal analogy stops there. But uh, I, I must say that uh, uh, women are, can really solve many, uh, uh, they can multitask and men cannot. So when you are solving a problem, I always find myself uh, 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 asking both men and women, and, and it's amazing to see that uh, they're at, at, uh, attacking the issues from different angles, and that's good for the brainstorming that I put, and that helped me really make the right decisions. So um, let me also tell you that uh, we at ITU have declared a Women and ICT Day, uh, the fourth, April, fourth uh, Thursday of April every year. Uh, this year's Girls in ICT Day included uh, more than 1,300 events held in nearly 90 countries and included uh, uh, the participation of German Chancellor Angela Merkel with hundreds of events uh, held at schools across Germany. We also used the occasion of Girls in ICT Day this year to launch a new three-year campaign, Tech Needs Girls, including advocacy, events, Girls in ICT ambassadors, and the further development of the Girls in ICT web portal. And just last week, on 11 October, the first UN International Day of Girls, we launched a new prize in conjunction with the Tech Needs Girls campaign. The first award will be made on Girls in ICT Day next year in 2013. Together, ladies and gentlemen, we can uh, bring women and girls into ICT and develop this enormous untapped human potential from the bottom of the pyramid up for the good of all of us. And on that note, I would like to open the floor to my distinguished panelists. I will start uh, from uh, Deborah Tate. From left, we go from left to right. I hope it's not having any political connotation. <laughs> Good, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Secret Secretary General, for your presence today. And thank you to all the gentlemen who are in this room. Thank you for your support of this issue going forward. We don't want to blame you. We just want to encourage you. 
I don't think you had any other choice with all the strong women in your life but to take these issues on. And I was going to tell all of you about many of the specific commitments that the Secretary General has already stated, but I thank you. I was going to give the example of the first CEO being hired at the, sec at the ITU that is a female. These are, these are important choices, and these are choices that each of you have. Um, thank you for the launch of the ICT and Girls, and last week, actually, I spent most of the week at an event in Seoul, Korea, on behalf of the ITU um, regarding women in ICT called Women with the Wave. And in many ways, we were cresting the wave, and in many ways, we were still underneath the wave. So I wanted to share a little bit with you about how women um, are portrayed in, uh, on the screen and behind the camera. Um, there is still a dismal lack of women in ICT jobs generally across the entire world, although it gives us an opportunity to be equal. Even in Korea, the most last week it was just uh, released that it is the number one, continues to be the number one most connected nation in the world, the 17th largest economy, and ICT is exploding there. But there are only nine non family board members on Korean's top Fortune 100 companies. Uh, women make 39% less than men for the same jobs. A recent Harvard study showed that there was a link behind women who had been hired in India at call centers, an ICT job, granted not the highest paying one, but at least jobs in an ICT call center, and there was a direct correlation between how the girls of those mothers were treated, raised, their educational attain attainment, their health, and that they saw themselves finding a path to prosperity. And how are we doing in the U.S.? Well, the Secretary General said a couple of things. We are actually 90th in women in official positions. I think that is terrible. 17% um, of parliaments worldwide, and there are fewer than that as members of Congress. And in fact, last election was the first time that we actually lost members of women in Congress. One study, however, I found very interesting, that if, if women had the same access to land, to property ownership, to seeds, fertilizer, and water, that their crop yields would increase 20 times and feed 150 million more people. What an untapped natural resource you all have in your country just by giving women a chance. We must utilize ITCs to ensure that every person on the planet is connected, but until we do, we will still have a data gender gap, and we can't fully employ or deploy this great natural resource of women to their full potential as economic drivers, as political leaders, and most importantly, as peacemakers. I love the example of the female president of Kosovo who wanted to be a police officer. She went through training. She became a great police officer. She climbed up the ranks of leadership, and then she was elected president. We often say in the U.S., if, if little girls can see it, they can be it. The president of Kosovo is an incredible example in a war-torn country that any little girl can aspire to be a leader in the free world. Women jumpstart jobs, expand opportunities by creating jobs, and drive economic growth around the world from leasing cell phones, as we know in villages, to creating a banked economy, to world-class scientists and even astronauts. Women are entrepreneurs are in every single tiny village and urban center, but they are often part of an invisible economy, but a very real economy. The panel has a lot of interesting projects, and I would like to applaud Secretary of State Hillary Clinton for her EDGE initiative and OECD for launching their gender initiative, and as I said, the SG for launching girls in ICT. Positive results for women, for their families, their communities, and entire society. 
And why is it important? It's important because women focus on human rights, on justice issues, education for all, and the economic renewal, yet they often are overlooked. Other global initiatives I'm sure that will be discussed uh, have to do with new systems to monitor um, sex violence in over 20 countries, and DOJ is encouraging countries all across the world to increase penalties and update their laws regarding accountability of women. Georgetown University a few weeks ago launched an Institute for Women, Peace, Security, and Development. I really encourage any of you all to reach out to Georgetown. We have an opportunity. All of you in this room can change how you do business in your region or your nation. Hire more women. Provide mentorship programs to keep them in the workforce the way that the SG did. Pay them fairly. Provide leadership training so they can become a CEO or go on the board. Hire them in groups or bundles. This has been shown that when you hire people in groups, there is so much more diversity of the new hire hirees and keep those girls in school and especially in STEM classes. The technology of this decade will give us the chance to get and provide data to guide our decisions and maximize the impact of women. ICTs are the next great equalizer for the next decade. They provide technologies that don't care if they're used by male or female. They allow the democratization of data with the power of analysis. Together, whether by wave or wire, you can give a voice to the voiceless. So do something for women. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Debbie. You know, when I met, uh, I met uh, Debbie's husband, I was very happy to meet him because I said, at last I know there is, uh, behind every strong woman there is a man, so I, 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 <laughs> I, I was very happy to meet him. That's the new rule now. and. Uh, we are behind. Uh, before I give the floor to Khadija Geriani, I would like to, uh, Excellency Minister uh, Daisy Maria to uh, uh, say a few words first, and you, you will understand why. <laughs> please, Daisy, please. Muy buenos días para todos mis compañeras y compañeros de la mesa. Thank you very much. Good morning to all of you, my partners in this endeavor. I come from Costa Rica, a small country located in Central America. We have a population of 4.5 million inhabitants, and 50% of our population is made up of women. In our country, we now have a law, a gender equality law, that makes it mandatory for all powers in our republic, the legislative power the parliament and also the judiciary and the executive power to give posts to at least 50 percent of the posts to women so we have this gender equality law now in place it does give us a very interesting scenario it creates the right environment and in fact 50 percent is just the minimum provided for by the law and this percentage and reality can be surpassed some of these positions are elected positions, and we do sometimes have more women than 50% in some of these positions. The country has been progressing and advancing considerably in some of the areas touched upon here by Mr. Touré. We now are in a position to invest in education and health and to better distribute our resources also. We now have universal health system in place and a free for all kind of system and also the same for education, primary and secondary level education. And always with a view, of course, to keeping the gender balance. We are a country that not only is characterized by its rich flora and fauna and by its fame as a privileged tourist destination, but one also where We've seen a lot of progress in terms of technology and ICTs in particular, and which have made the country an important hub for innovation and technology in the region. A study conducted not too long ago by a higher advisory body, CAATEC and also Unimer Research, 
from about from a sample of about a hundred of a total of 500 companies in the ICT industries shows that the country does have a great potential to become a premium technological destination on a global level. The Costa Rican market is also a prime destination for the sales of these products. In fact, 55 percent of all ICT companies do currently export their services and products to Latin America as well as to the United States and Europe. Moreover, the sector continues to innovate its offer of products and services, which is again an indispensable trait if one wants to become indispensable and competitive. We have seen that about 86 percent of the companies have improved the quality of their solutions, and 80 percent have actually recently released a new product or service. This context creates a lot of environment for new industries, technological industries, which are now the driving force behind our economy, basically from their focus on ICTs. And we continue to rely on these companies to help us build a Costa Rica that continues to provide well-being to our populations. We now have a new president-elect, a woman, Mrs. Laura Miranda, who has been the advocate of very important projects like digital signature, digital government or e-government, and that again are based on ICTs. Thanks to these initiatives, our president-elect uh, was the recipient in January of 2009 of an important prize awarded by the Link Americas Foundation, a prize that she shared with Hillary Clinton and the, prior, the Nobel Prize laureate Stephen Chu. Costa Rica understands quite clearly that ICTs are an important tool for social, economic, and political development. We understand that it is important to continue to invest not just time but also material resources to increase the inclusion level that we see in these areas. We have to continue to promote university, technical education, as well as financing of business women, entrepreneuring women with a lot of gender balance to the extent possible. Women currently working in ICTs, as well as those who aspire to do so, will have to face many challenges, but they will also going to be given, they're also going to be given a number of opportunities that will allow them to grow in these scenarios, in these markets, and to also strengthen their presence in this labor market. We're now working on such issues as telework and increase of our number, of the number of scholarships to middle and college students and, of course, also a number of other processes geared at increasing the process of inclusion, both along the vertical and the horizontal axis. We also have increased the participation of women in the labor market, which grew from 20 percent in the 1970s to 39.4 percent over the last years, according to a study conducted by the National Institute of Statistics in Costa Rica. In this context, the national and international context now allows us, or allow, allow us to manage our responsibility in a shared fashion. And that will necessarily involve the private sector and the government in such a way as to increase the number of opportunities and give a new drive to the government policies and the technological advances that will allow us to continue to innovate not just the ICT sectors, but also the health-related services therein. We understand that public health is an important network that congregates the actions of millions of individuals geared at improving the quality of public goods and ultimately geared at providing everyone with the level of well-being that they deserve. Public health is an important policy, and it is our duty to keep it up to date with all the necessary technologies and everything out there in terms of knowledge and information, everything that we need 
to take full advantage of all the tools that are now at our disposal to increase the integration of our population and reinforce the concept of people-centric health. In this fashion, all the ICT tools that we currently have are an important tool for our country and will help us create the necessary opportunities that we want to make available to business and entrepreneuring women. Thanks to technology, I am convinced that we will be able to give a new impulse to our businesses and allow everyone a platform on which they can display their ideas, products on a national and international level. This provides you with an overview, so to speak, of Costa Rica. But I wanted to also say that in our country, we do still deal with some products. We have 20% of our population still under the poverty line. We have still a high degree of adolescent pregnancy, and we still battle that. And we also have a high number of women who are single mothers and who are the subject of violence. And these episodes of violence very often do lead to homicide. In the field of health, we consider that Costa Rica has to do more. And we hope to be able to do more now that we can rely on the ICTs, which will allow us to better plan all the initiatives that we need to set in place to reach those women who are currently in their homes. We have to increase coverage. Currently, we have 30% of our homes with access to internet. In the rural area, the coverage is of about 20%. In the urban areas, that coverage is of about 35%. Ownership of computers is around 40% and pretty much the entire population has now access to mobile telephony and we also have a number of people, most of the population again, with access to TV. We, in terms of digital divide, rank as average to low level. And we now understand that with this new push, this new impulse, we'll be in a better position to take full advantage of these technologies, and hopefully we will push the country forward. I'm actually myself a product of this system. I am originally from a family, a low-income, average-income family, and I was fortunate enough to be able to access the public education made available to our population in Costa Rica. I am a biologist by education. And I later transited to a more health-specific um, setting. But at the same time, I have four children of my own. I have a house to look after. And I was only able to keep all these balls in the air and juggle all of that, thanks in great part to all the technologies that were made available and that continue to be make, uh, made available to all of us. So I wanted to share with you the experience that we have in our country and to say that I, as a minister, I'm doing all I can to promote the development of these technologies to increase our reach and to increase also awareness about the individual regarding the self-care. Thank you, Minister Corrales Diaz. Uh, you understand why I wanted to give you the floor because Costa Rica and Rwanda, for my knowledge, uh, uh, is are the only two countries in the world that have reached that 50-50 uh, distribution level so far. 50% in government, 50% in parliament, and I hope that the list will be longer. Now I'm hearing that it's almost 60% now in, uh, in Costa Rica, so the men here will join me, will go back there and fight for a men's right <laughs> very soon, if you, if you don't stop there. So, um, Madam Minister, please stop. <laughs> we also need to be part of it. <laughs> We're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, say, say it again. <laughs> One translation of what you said. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, the same thing affects the men in Costa Rica. We do have a universal health system, but we have a strong focus on maternal and, and children care. We now are trying to tilt the system somewhat so it also serves the men better because we do have men that are sometimes uh, not particularly assisted. So we have, of course, uh, no concern in terms of prenatal care and things like that, but we do have to look into things as, as such as prostate cancer and things of this sort. In fact, uh, trying to get the balance, this is one of the reasons why uh, when I was elected, I also uh, decided to have a paternity leave in case of uh, family. And it's, it's, I'm serious, I'm, I'm serious, uh, we have a paternity leave. When you have a baby, father also have the right to take a few days mm -hmm. to go and take part of it, take your baby as well. I believe it's part of the, the family uh, uh, well, well-being and those other things. Little details, but uh, it's important. We need paternity leave too. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Kadija Giriani, you, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général et le Président de Session. Je voudrais euh, d'abord euh, vous adresser, adresser mes remerciements pour votre présence, moi aussi. Do we, do we have a translation for French? From French? No, we don't. Yeah, I can speak. Uh, oh. uh, English, English translation is available from French. English is on channel two. Please. I know you can, so no problem. <laughs> I prefer speaking French. If yeah. I, there is translation, uh, yes. Translation is available on channel two. Thank you. Sorry, I prefer to speak. Donc, je voudrais d'abord commencer. I would like to start by uh, thanking Mr. Secretary General first for your support to women. You are one of the biggest supporters of uh, women in the telecommunication sector, and I would like to thank you for that. I would like to thank you for your invitation, and to thank you for this very privileged partnership that we enjoy in our organization, the ITU, as well as our efforts that we are undertake together and that concern the gender equality in this particular sector. It is true, and I would not uh, like to go into many details and statistics. We have the example of Costa Rica, which is an excellent example. But we are very far yet from achieving the goal in throughout the world of this gender equality, or rather balance, if we would like to be more specific. We cannot always achieve uh, equality in every uh, single domain, but we can seek a proper balance. Our world cannot develop without one of its halves taking part in this process. Therefore, today it is important for women. Women's role in society is important as a mother and an entrepreneur as a manager of a company, which is itself, uh, its family, its household, is also considered a corporation. Therefore, women should be, should move from the role of users to producers of technology. The figures are optimistic. The latest figures of uh, the 2011 statistics, they state, that 80% of users of ICT uh, are female. Even among the users of Facebook, 80% are women. And here we can see the actual presence of women in this hierarchy of decision makers. 
even this effort to bridge the gap in the use of ICT, increasing the presence of women and the access in ICT and even in politics when we know that uh, a woman's vote has the same value as a men's vote, but unfortunately the amount of participation in political life is not the same always. This being said, in the Arab world, the part of the world f from which I come from, we need to say that uh, Arab women were able uh, to recently show their role as users of ICT, and especially over the past few years, they have increased the participation in the movement witnessed uh, in our region and in many of our countries, such as Tunisia, which is quite active in social media, which were able to, and social networks, Tunisians were able to claim their rights as human beings, as citizens, through social networks, and also their rights as women. And uh, here we have a few examples of those present around the table. Uh, Dr. Hessa is one example. And you would see also Mrs. Nasruddin, who is uh, the Palestinian Minister of Telecommunications. Also in Algeria, the ministry has uh, a woman heading it. These are a few examples. And in terms of uh, statistics we see that uh, many women are active and we are still far from achieving uh, proper e equality but on the in the arab world and in the arab region we see differing amounts of uh, distribution but today the main preoccupation is to reinforce the gains that uh, Arab women have achieved in terms of policy. We need to absolutely reinforce that role and to preserve these gains because there's always a risk of losing what we have achieved and to, to go backward in, in, in our gains and regress. We are not in favor of positive discrimination or affirmative action, but uh, if that were the only solution in order to see more women achieving decision-making positions, then maybe this would lead to actual positive discrimination in that field. A few more words on the specificities of uh, rural women who remain, who still uh, did not manage to be part of the information society. And therefore, we need a better level of uh, organization with regard to training. A training of rural women on uh, the mobile applications and in particular anything to do with mobile payment and these are the efforts that we are undertaking along with other Arab and international organizations and we do have uh, an annual program that we run for the benefit of rural women such programs uh, are run in order to uh, provide help to Arab women, and, and uh, one of the main preoccupations is favoring uh, and uh, fostering uh, youth and, uh, employment, and uh, specifically women's, young women's employment. Today we see that many youth are entering the ICT field, but we need to see further uh, amount of women in, the, in that field. Especially, they, they do have a certain identity within the ethics uh, department, but 
they need to have further involvement and further realistic uh, representation. Therefore, we see today that uh, there are networks of Arab women in ethical networks, and they benefit and they, they undertake the training of uh, young entrepreneur uh, female leaders. And I would like also to focus a little bit on Palestinian women, those who are struggling on a daily basis for their survival and their use of uh, the uh, ITC measures, uh, such as uh, mobile phones. And you, you may very well know that Palestinian women are uh, scattered around the country and they have uh, some uh, movement, difficulties of movement uh, from one part of their country to the other. And the use of mobile phones, they enables them, they enables uh, people to stay in touch with their families, especially Palestinian women. And we have uh, a program in that regard that is dedicated to Palestinian women to enable the use and the training, uh, training them on the better usage of uh, uh, information and having a better access to it. I think uh, that's uh, mostly what I wanted to, to present to you. As uh, has been said uh, many times by Mr. Toure, it is allowed to dream. We are allowed to dream in ITC. All our dreams have been made true uh, today. And uh, we uh, see this phenomenal uh, development in the sector. We can all still dream. And uh, seeing the presence of uh, men in this room today, and this, uh, this uh, bears witness to the sort of equality that we seek, and the, we still seek the support of men in that regard. Women uh, prove that uh, we need to prove that we can achieve some of these dreams and uh, we can attain a level of representation of women in the ITC sector. And uh, that would uh, be ever closer to that uh, uh, equality that we aspire to. When we hold all those, all these fora and uh, workshops, the presence of women as, uh, has us usually been uh, more associated to uh, participants who uh, are receivers rather than providers. But now we are seeing a better picture. And therefore, we thank you for uh, taking part in this uh, uh, forum and uh, for achieving these realities. Yeah. Je dois dire que Madame la Ministre des Communications, des eh, Technologies de l'Information du Palestine est là. Madame la Ministre, s'il vous plaît, et bienvenue. Euh, merci, c'est une dame. Je vais donc passer la, la parole à euh, la conseillère du ministre euh, des Communications du Sénégal, Madame Diaye. Minister India, you have the floor, sir. I thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Senegal is honored to take part in this round table about women and ICTs. Allow me first and foremost to convey an expression of solidarity and best wishes for success from His Excellency, the President of Senegal, as well as the members of his cabinet, especially as we are dealing with a subject which is very dear to his heart. Senegal finds that the change of, uh, in uh, the field of uh, telecoms, uh, whose main characteristic is uh, deregulation and the appearance of new services and uh, actors, uh, places us uh, or confronts us with new challenges. We therefore have to, in fact, uh, bring governments uh, to act appropriately. The Senegal 
we needs uh, to stress and intends uh, to stress the importance of ITU in the field of telecoms. Uh, we also seek uh, to uphold uh, the need to promote a balanced growth in the field of telecoms, which should allow us, enable us, in fact, to overcome the digital gap. My country is currently, in fact, establishing a strategy in the digital world and planning our strategy of passage from audio from the analog to digital world. At the plenipotentiary conference that met in Guadalajara in 2010, the international community, in fact, set itself the goal of facilitating the equal social integration of men and women in the ICT environment to guarantee better representation for women in positions of responsibility and administrations. Senegal has, in fact, dedicated its uh, entire plans here within a national plan and, in fact, has provided uh, part of the financing in uh, the 2012 budget. I would like to point out uh, that uh, Senegal, in fact, has expressed a determined intention to bring about equality between men and women. This has led to a national strategy for gender equality. This has set out the government's clear vision on this matter and the, which uh, seeks to achieve two goals, one, to uh, establish the appropriate environment uh, for this equality and uh, to include uh, the gender perspective in all our programs. Uh, program and law on equality in 2010 is, in fact, an attempt uh, to uphold all the achievements so far in this field, especially at the level of decision-making. We within the framework of uh, the promotion uh, of uh, the inclusion of men and women in ICT and rather young girls and women in the field of ICT, I would like to point out uh, the plans uh, to include them uh, in uh, quality education and to include ICT education at mid-level and upper-level uh, educational levels. We are also seeking to provide teaching and training uh, opportunities uh, at a young age. Thus, young children receive quality education, and uh, this is achieved through the public uh, information regarding ICT. We are also seeking uh, to bring about an overall implementation of telecoms in the field of work. We are are seeking as well to promote the use of ICTs in the field of trainees. With a view to further develop equality between boys and girls in access uh, to ICTs, the government of Senegal intends over the next few days uh, to bring about uh, the integration of boys and girls in this field, and this should enable girls to access ICTs uh, in and to identify the reasons why, in certain segments of the population, young girls face up barriers. This will, of course, require us to bring about a change in behavior and attitudes. For further information on all these initiatives, I would like to invite you to visit our internet site, www women tick Jay, i was going to ask you to limit uh, your speaks to three minutes and you you did it marvelously i'm gonna go now go on this side uh, and ask uh, mr mizian to uh, take the floor on behalf of minister of communication and then dr Aesa, you'll be next <laughs> okay <laughs> okay okay all right okay 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 Mr. Secretary General, Dr. Hamadoun Touré. Mr. Secretary General, Dr. Hamadoun Touré, Ashab Asad, Al Wazara. Excuse de son excellence, Monsieur le Ministre de la Poste et des Technologies de l'Information et de la. 
Allow me first and foremost uh, to express my regrets uh, for the absence of our minister who has attended the opening, but who uh, unfortunately is unable to attend today's meeting. Allow me also to express my thanks to the Secretary General for this uh, invitation. And on behalf of the minister, I believe we have three minutes. Uh, Allow me, therefore, on behalf of the minister, in fact, uh, to give you a general outline of our actions. Measures taken to help women to access ICTs are part of our overall government policy. This policy is aimed at improving uh, the status and condition of women. Women are called upon to play a first-class role uh, since the very beginning of our national independence. Women represent about uh, 50 percent of our population. Our constitution in 2008 uh, improves uh, women's participation through representation within the administrative uh, and parliamentary process. I would like to also point out uh, that 145 women were elected at the latest legislature in May 2012, thanks to a law adopted one year earlier regarding women's participation. 7% were of women were represented in the previous assembly. This has increased to 30%. So women are now enjoying a wider representation and participation. And all uh, political parties are now required to field uh, 20 to 50 percent candidates. In 2015, Algeria has achieved the third millennium development goal, namely eliminate all differences between boys and girls in the field of education. Therefore, on the background of uh, this information, you may measure the progress we have achieved in the field of ICT. We are playing an increasing role here to improve uh, the status of women. Here, Algeria and its government have, in fact, planned their activity on the background of global, uh, global achievements uh, through education transfer of technology and the creation of job opportunities. Forty percent of women occupy posts in the administration. We have increased the number of high officials in all government administrations. A large number of women are members of the boards of governors of many institutions. And overall, enterprises are encouraged to increase women representation amongst their staff and to encourage teleworking and training. As part of a celebration of the International Day for Young Girls, uh, we have uh, taken major decisions uh, to favor certain categories of women and to encourage women managers. Uh, we even women reporters in the report various sectors will be provided free training in ICTs. We are also launching a competition for the best websites and best software applications regarding women participation in ICT. I would like to stress that the the director of uh, the uh, regulation authorities in my country is a woman. We are seeking, therefore, for women to be as well informed as men in this field. In three minutes, I was trying to give you all the information available, says the speaker, and I apologize for the speed. Women are, therefore, 
trained for use of ICTs, and they are now becoming an important factor in our societies to help promote equality between men and women. We are therefore seeking to bring about greater independence of women. We have a portal that is dedicating to women who wish to be informed as to the latest trends regarding our efforts. It is known as Dunya Mag. I would like to also point out that in the rural world, we are launching efforts to facilitate the access of rural women to IC2 by creating rural centers. These centers will be increased from 2,000 to 3,000 by 2,004 and will especially dedicated to the training and the increasing of information regarding ICTs. We also encourage women to access the Internet through a cam dedicated campaign. We, in fact, are providing SIM cards which provide access to the Internet. Also, through providing assistance in the field of professional integration and creating special posts for women. In the efforts undertaken by our government, we are trying to encourage the employment of young women graduates and providing with information on the management of ICTs. We have, in fact, succeeded in hiring a large number of women in an institute, which is the National Institute of ICTs. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Merci. Beaucoup de progrès ont été réalisés, mais j'ai retenu les 34%. That you have achieved great progress in this field. However, 34%, 34% is not a F enough. You have to try to achieve more. We are better than some, but not as good as others. It says. I would like to uh, recognize uh, in this room ministers from uh, Libya, from Cote d'Ivoire, from uh, uh, Uganda, from Gabon. And from Liberia, I uh, don't know if I miss any other minister in this room here. Uh, I would like to welcome, and, and Mauritius, of course, yes, and, and uh, Burundi, who is, uh, this is a lady also, uh, you can say. You know, <laughs> the only lady, the two ladies in the crowd there, that's from in, time, in relation to Palestine. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I will now go to Minister uh, Omobola Johnson from Nigeria. We hope to have uh, enough time to make some question and answers. I want this to session to be very interactive, and I will have a question to the, uh, the, the panelists here. What are the key uh, factors that will enable us to reach our goal? That's one, one thing that I would like to leave if in this room here. Uh, Madam Johnson, you have the floor. Thank you, Secretary General. Good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think the first thing I'd like to say is that uh, every single woman in this room today is actually an exception to the rule. Every single woman is an exception to the rule. And just very quickly to read out some statistics of what is the rule, particularly in, uh, in African countries uh, and developing, developing countries all over the world. You know, one girl in seven marries before the age, marries before the age of 15. Uh, more than a quarter of girls will be, mar will be mothers before they're 18. 70% of children that are out of school are girls, and the resultant effect is that women are less literate than men. Uh, in nine out of 17 countries studied in Africa, being female negatively affected the probability of having uh, e-skills, and the chances of a woman benefiting from the advantages of an information society are one-third less than men. So clearly these are hugely alarming statistics. We're dealing right now with the case of a young girl in Pakistan that was shot simply because she wanted an education and she's struggling for her life right now. So this is a very big issue. And I think I really want to commend the ITU and Secretary General for taking on this challenge in a very, very committed uh, manner, particularly in the way that ICTs can help to reduce a lot of these, um, these alarming statistics, these very scary statistics that we're seeing in developing countries. I think there are just three points I want to make. If ICTs are, can be a tool for inclusive development, and really what we're seeing is that women are excluded from a lot of the development that is going on in the world right now, there are three things that we need to look at. We need to look at connectivity, 
We need to look at access and we need to look at adoption of these ICTs for women. In terms of connectivity, what we find is that many of the women that are at the bottom of the pyramid are women that live in rural areas. And so therefore, the importance of getting connectivity to those rural areas becomes critically important for developing, uh, for developing countries. In Nigeria, we're using our universal service funds to very actively uh, incentivize our private sector operators to take connectivity to those rural areas at a cost uh, that is affordable and at a speed that also uh, makes sense. Um, looking at access, you know, even when we get the connectivity there, many of these women, they're poor. They can't afford these devices. Uh, they can't afford the access to what we have to pay for, for uh, minutes on, the, on mobile phones or for data. And so therefore we need to also begin to address our minds. So how do we, uh, how do we get these women to access the internet, access uh, mobile networks and all the uh, benefits of that? Um, and one of the ways that we have done that is really around targeted subsidies. Uh, we have a program in Nigeria right now where um, uh, farmers will be getting their subsidy for fertilizers over the mobile phone. Now, when we started this pilot, we realized that, first of all, there wasn't connectivity to many of the rural areas where these farmers are. Secondly, 70% of rural farmers are actually women, and that's because many of the men have gone to the cities. And of course, these women don't own devices. So what we're doing right now is figuring out how we can actually get cheap devices to these uh, women as well so they can get the fertilizers. Another thing in terms of access is that um, in one of the states, my, my ethnic state, uh, my state in particular, when a woman is pregnant, she's encouraged to, when she registers for antenatal clinics, she gets a phone. And what that phone does is that she can be reminded about her next antenatal clinic. She can also be given information via SMS on the progress of her, of her pregnancy. She can be given, um, she, uh, co she contacts the health center. And in a country where maternal mortality is one of the highest in the world, this particular very simple SMS uh, device is, is saving, is saving a, a, lot of, a lot of lives. Access again, public access venues are very important. They've been mentioned. Um, women do not feel safe or secure in cyber cafes. Uh, when you go to a cyber cafe in many of these developing countries, the first thing when you open up the, the computer, the first thing you see is porn. Many women don't want, they don't want, they don't, they don't like cyber cafes. So we've got to figure out a way for those that can't even afford this device, like I said. We've got to find ways of actually getting them to access the internet in a safe manner uh, that they're very confident and comfortable in doing. And again, we've done some of this. Community communication centers, some of them are run by women. We find that women are actually much better custodians of assets than men are. And so the ones that are run by women tend to be much better kept and much better utilized than the ones that, uh, that, that are run by men. And finally, in terms of adoption, when we get connectivity, we get access, we need to get these women to adopt these, uh, to adopt these technologies. Social reasons, cultural illiteracy, women are slower adapters of these technologies. And so therefore, what we need to do is make ICTs more relevant to their lives. I've given the example of health. Uh, I've given the example of making it uh, important for the economic empowerment. And very quickly, just one very graphic example. We're running a program in Nigeria. It's called You Win, Youth in, um, uh, Youth in Enterprise. What it is basically is that you apply on the internet. It's a, it's a grant program for young businesses. You apply for the grant on the internet. You're shortlisted. Then you submit your business plan on the internet. That is reviewed. And you get all, everything is done by technology. We ran a very successful pilot with you know, 18 to 40-year-olds uh, for women, men and women. It was very successful. And we decided to do one for women. The second phase was just for women only. And the biggest challenge we had was that a lot of these women didn't have access to the internet. They couldn't use technology. And so we're really struggling to make sure that we keep this thing technology-driven. But it was just a very glaring example of how women are not as um, comfortable or don't have access, access to the um, to technologies that we, uh, that we assume. Final thing, very quickly, um, women and girls in ICT, again, I want to commend the ITU for that. Um, we have to move women from being just users and consumers of technology to being the actual designers and producers of that technology. I graduated with a degree in engineering 30 years ago. There were just five girls in my class of 80. My daughter graduated, incidentally, from the same university, different discipline, but also engineering. Five girls in a class of about 100. 30 years, nothing's changed. And I think that initiative is actually a very important one to get women more interested and seeing ICTs as a veritable, uh, it's a career, it's a career, um, uh, it's a very, it's, it's an area where you can actually make a career in. It's an area where you can actually make an impact, whether in the business world or in the social world. And we must encourage women and girls to really go into technologies as a means of um, solving some of these problems. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Angola. <laughs> When you say that uh, women are better managers than men, I will not dare to contradict you. <laughs> I'll be in deep trouble. So I will just pass the floor to Laura here. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Surgeon General.
I like to, first of all, oh, I'll speak in French, sorry. <laughs> Bonjour à tous, en particulier à monsieur et mesdames les ministres. Excellencies, uh, the minister is in charge of uh, ITC. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, I would like to thank you for the opportunity of allowing all of us to discuss uh, a serious international issue, which is uh, uh, the issue of women's development and uh, their devel economic development and uh, the many respective uh, issues with regard to their access to ICT. We've listened to the experience of many countries, including uh, Costa Rica, who has undertaken a very appreciable effort in terms of uh, the uh, empowerment of women, but we are witnessing uh, different different issues in many countries like Nigeria where we have problems with uh, uh, connectivity and accessibility. In 2003, the President Omar Bongo uh, said during a summit on the right to information that he would he would make the issue of uh, access to water, electricity, and ICT uh, a main goal for development in his country. His uh, successor was elected according to a vision based on three pillars. And I don't need to talk about the first one being uh, a green Gabon with, uh, re with natural resources. But the, he insisted on a Gabon uh, that provides services, and namely ICT services, in his campaign. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we see that once again, women are left aside because they don't have the uh, necessary knowledge. They don't enjoy the opportunity that many other women who had the chance to be trained and uh, educated. I'm talking about rural women. I'm talking about the victims of uh, um, young prostitution. And we do have responsibility with regard to this category of women, because these women, without any revenue, who are left to their own devices, and uh, as uh, single mothers, they constitute a social category that would lead a revolution with uh, many bad consequences to our economies and the stability of our countries. Therefore, uh, what I want to insist on here today is to call for the Secretary General not only the Secretary General of the ITU, that we all have to be ambassadors of uh, women in developing countries for efforts to be mobilized in order to realize projects uh, that enable women to regain their dignity. And to give a smile back to women. <laughs> and in this sense, uh, this is uh, why I was appointed Minister of ITC with the objective of uh, launching programs in order to stimulate ITC development in our country. The director of one of the specialized centers has found itself overwhelmed with the number of uh, women who wanted to have access to uh, education in ICT, and therefore she had to create its special projects in order to take care of these women who want to go into that field of activity. And uh, we see also an emergence of online uh, media in our country. And we are starting to see uh, some reaction, a positive reaction with regard to these efforts. So to summarize, the, this is a call for you, Mr. Secretary General, to come visit us and uh, also try to mobilize efforts in order to favor this cause for women. Thank you. I can tell you that uh, all of us here in this room will be ambassadors for this cause. So I'm very happy to share that with everybody. 
uh, it reminds me uh, a dinner uh, two weeks ago in, in New York uh, during the General Assembly where uh, uh, my colleague, uh, the Director General of UNESCO, was in the, in the, in the dinner, uh, Irina Bokova, and she was praising me for being uh, the father of the Broadband Commission. And of course, we did this thing together. So I told her, no, 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 we, we are, uh, it's our baby. And then I realized, how am I talking to a lady and saying our baby? I said, no, what I mean is your baby and my baby too. <laughs> it's not our baby. So <laughs> just to be correct here, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of a, finding myself in the trouble. So all of here, we, we, we the father of this thing, you know, together. <laughs> Dr. Aisa, you have the last word. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hamdan. I'd just like uh, first to ask a question because you mentioned that uh, ITU, the, you have uh, a woman day. And you, uh, you mentioned it, it's on 1st of April. Fourth of April. Yeah, because I thought you mentioned 1st of April. I thought why you're using the full day for woman day. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I know that uh, I think uh, uh, all of us, we heard a lot about women and ICT, and I know that I have pages that I can share with you what we are doing in uh, Qatar for women and how we are empowering women. But I thought what's happened uh, 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 this morning, uh, there is a small incident happened which 100% changed what I will share with you today. I was checking out from the hotel, and I was, I was, uh, I mean, I mean, on the line, and in the front desk in front of me, uh, there were two very professional women. They were fully covered. Or, I mean, both of them, you can tell that they are coming here either to attend a conference or maybe a consultant. And then they are, I mean, they are asking the front desk manager if they can extend because they, I mean, they would like to have a late checkout. And, and, uh, and he was not very professional to them, which is, it's fine. But then one of them told him, yeah, but, uh, but when we checked in, you did not let us check in early. We checked in 9 uh, p.m. instead. I was very surprised when and he saw her in a very, I, I, was, I would say to me, it's in a very impolite way. He laughed and he told her, yeah, because we would like to keep beautiful women outside. And at that, uh, and, uh, and I'm talking here about very prestigious hotel, it's one of the, and I would say at that woman, I realized, no matter uh, what, we will be empowering women, we will educate, and I would say she could be my daughter, your daughters, your sisters, or, and no matter how we will be empowering women, how we will use ICT to uh, educate them, to still, I think we should really educate the society. We should really, we as parents, as a brother and sister, uh, I do not think that, uh, and, and I can't tell she was very upset. She could not even uh, said anything, and I could see tears in uh, her eyes. And, uh, and I think maybe one thing we should do as a society, we should really empower women to just uh, stand for their right. And their, their right, it's, uh, I know that it would be good if they would be elected or be the CEO, but it's the basic things to be respected from uh, the, uh, so the uh, society. So this is point number one. Point number two, I know that we're talking a lot about mentoring, empowering, and, and one thing I always uh, feel it kind of, uh, we can set a lot of policy to empower women, a lot of program, or uh, I assure you if this will not come from within the society, if this change will not come from a woman in the, within the society, and somebody in, 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 in this group, in this community believe in it, it will be very interesting speech we will give, a very nice book we will maybe, and uh, yeah, we will feel good that we really did good for, for uh, good things for the woman. But, uh, but uh, the way I see it, unless this come from, from within the community itself, and even if that would be slow, we do not need to, because uh, changing or empowering women through ICT, and uh, I'm one uh, woman who ICT had, empower my life uh, um, yeah, and extensively. When I graduated 
in years ago, I will not tell you when that, I was a civil engineer. I could not work as a civil engineer because I'm from Qatar and usually engineering is, was not very accepted uh, professional at that time. What I did, I, I thought maybe best things is for me to change my study and went and uh, started uh, IT, started computer science and uh, I changed my study uh, after spending five years as a uh, as a civil engineer, after I get my degree, I realized that uh, I could not work as an engineer, and ICT had really empowered my uh, my life. But uh, I still believe two things to empower women. Number one, we as parents, we should really empower our girls to stand for uh, their right, and their right it's not to be elected, it's just to be uh, treated like uh, men when it comes to respect. Number two, if there is any changes we, we think that we'd like to do it, it should come from the, within the community, not from outside. Thank you. If you'd like to read anything about Qatar, I think you can go to ICT Qatar website. We have been doing a lot of great things. And uh, thanks. Wow, that's very inspiring. Yes. We are short of time, but I would like to go around the table. We don't have time for questions and answers, unfortunately. I know some of you may have some questions, but I would just want to go over the, around the table. Just one word, what needs to be done? And Dr. Hesa has already uh, you know, uh, set the stage for that. From your standpoint, what needs to be done? done? If you have one thing to say to a leader, well, one, what needs to be said to, to him or her? For, that, for the decision to empower women. I'll start with Debbie again. One word. You know I have five. <laughs> <laughs> I was always told when you ask one for a woman and she gives you five. Okay. <laughs> one is this whole concept of hiring in groups. Yes. Hiring in bundles. Mm -hmm. And it's called bundles actually. Because when you hire a group of people, you see whether there's diversity in that group. When you just hire people one at a time, you don't really know whether you're hiring of diversity. Okay, good, thank you. Taria. Just a word to the decisions and their excellence. To decision makers, uh, to all the ministers who are present here, I would like to tell them, please encourage women uh, to be up uh, to the level of taking decision and uh, help them out. Because as uh, Dr. Uh, Hassa said, it is very difficult for women in the start, in the beginning of their careers, to be able to uh, achieve what they want. And so please help them out uh, to be able to be capable of extraordinary things. And most of all, we need to help uh, the young engineers and help them to achieve the post positions of decision makers, please. Please, one word. I would like to tell decision makers, uh, you have to be courageous. You have to uh, dare uh, go beyond boundaries to achieve what is needed. It's deliberate and committed inclusiveness. Deliberate and committed inclusiveness of women. Six words. Committed. Madame Lor, s'il vous plaît. Merci, Monsieur. Miss Lor, thank you, Mr. Secretary General. The advantage of uh, private and public partnerships in order to enable. We actually need political will and also community-oriented public services, also education and education for change. In my opinion, we need to, uh, women to fight in order to act and to achieve results on the legislative side and to achieve results in that regard. Thank you. Any more, any more uh, work to add? Just parents. I think parents should really uh, raise their kids uh, equal. I, uh, boy.
Thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, I always say time is the only thing we never have enough, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, I'm not the one who invented days with 24 hours. If it was me, I would have done much better than that. I would have given them more than that. But uh, we will uh, stop here uh, uh, this session. But you've seen how wonderful uh, our panels were, and they deserve a really good round of applause.